especially in those so-called mature church, where faith in Christ Jesus is no longer a personal encounter, when the Lord Jesus is not truly experienced, and especially in today's gospel, they could not say, today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And therefore, it is critical that the church have to do something for the work of evangelization. And therefore, central to the work of new evangelization, basically, two things we are concerned. Two things. Firstly, that every Catholic must have a personal encounter with the Lord Jesus. This is critical. This is the foundation of faith. This is the foundation of any evangelical missionary zeal. So long as Jesus is not your personal Savior and Lord, so long as you don't encounter the Lord Jesus in a personal way, you will have no zeal to spread about Him to others. It is only natural. If you have received good news, you will share. And that is why, let me ask you, have you spoken to Jesus? Have you spoken to someone about Jesus? Yesterday, one week ago. We just have to ask how many of our Catholics in their daily life have shared with someone about Jesus. The fact we don't share Jesus with others means to say He has not made a significant difference in my life. If you have gone for a beautiful, a nice movie, the moment when you finish the movie, you will SMS. This movie you cannot miss. For mundane things like that, we share with others. Because we have been touched. Because it is good news. And so if you just cross down the road, you know the famous durian store is just next to us. You buy the mountain sun durian. All these people know, all these we will tell people, but about Jesus. The fact that you don't tell someone what Jesus has done for you, means that he is not sinning. So that is the reason why this person encounter with the Lord Jesus is the beginning of faith. Without this, we cannot proceed further. And the truth is that, uh, particularly, in the mature church, and this is true especially in Europe, in those so-called first world Christian countries, <coughs> faith has become institutionalized. Faith has become a heritage, a culture, if it is a culture at all. It is something reduced to practices, it is a question of rituals. That the spirit of the faith, the spirit of the sacraments, the spirit of the practices of the church have been lost. And that is the reason why we know that the church is facing the most difficult time. Not only the church, but in general, the whole world. Because our greatest enemy today is secularism. Where today, many people can no longer experience God in society, in daily life, in the public life. And this is certainly going to impact on future generations because when God is more and more absent in daily life, then people think that science and technology can change the world. They think that they have all the answers to solve the world's problem. But as Pope Francis tells us, in Lumen Fidei. Yes, science and technology can bring about progress in the world. 
but science and technology cannot be progressed in the human heart. We can have better material life. It does not mean that we are more generous, we are more forgiving, we are more loving, we are happy. Because the heart cannot be changed by science and technology. The heart can only be changed by love. Only the love of God can change us. And you see, my dear brothers and sisters, this afternoon, today, when we gathered here, if you were to ask me, what is the goal of my episcopacy? Very simple. Okay, I have only two things to achieve. Firstly, I want every Catholic to have a personal encounter with the Lord. That is my desire. I don't care how we go about it. I don't subscribe to ideology. I don't subscribe even to movements or to groups. All these are means by which the Holy Spirit will. Whether it's through the charismatic, the new cat, whatever movement, so long as Jesus is brought to them, so long as they encounter Jesus, our work has been done. The first part. Secondly, those who have encountered the Lord Jesus, they will be instruments of Christ. They have become evangelical minded. I'm sure Father Urban has really spoken to you what the new evangelization is all about, the different sectors of society that we are called to make ourselves present because we are called to change because faith must be a living faith, it must be seen in daily life. We must have an impact in the world. And so if you were to ask me, what is the role of the charismatic renewal? The primary role of the charismatic renewal, as I see it, precisely is in the first stage of the new evangelization. The first stage of new evangelization is to give everyone a personal encounter with the Lord. You cannot encounter the Lord Jesus unless you are conscious of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the one who leads us to Jesus. No one can call Jesus his Lord, St. Paul says, unless he is filled with the Holy Spirit. That is why today, in the Gospel, we have Jesus, we are told, return to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And news of him spread throughout the whole region. The charismatic renewal is certainly one of the most important fruits of renewal in the church. And you can understand this, that it was during this period that the new movements were found. And that is why you notice the Holy Father gives a lot of emphasis to the new ecclesial movements. The real challenge today is how do we integrate the new ecclesial movements, charismatic renewal is one of these, into the local church. The truth is that in many churches, mature churches, the parishes are not alive. Somehow, something is lacking. The parish priest works very hard, and yet the people are not coming back to church. In these mature churches, you go to Australia, I was told it's pathetic. New Zealand! Oh. Father Edwin was just sharing with me last week. In New Zealand, the mass about 100 people. Every Sunday after one mass, you can go and play golf. There is nothing else to do. And the people don't want the priest to visit them. They don't want. They will see you if they need to for funerals. <laughs> That's the only time they get some stipends. Other than that, they don't get anything. You just have to wait for people to die. <laughs> this is a situation. And the priest works hard. A mother is nobody's interested. Why should they be interested? If they do not know Jesus. That's why in the first reading from the book of Sirach, in the book of Sirach, we are told, often I was in the danger of death. 
but by these demons our sake. Life is the courage of those who fear the Lord. Who fears the Lord is never alarmed, never afraid, for the Lord is his hope. Happy the soul that fears the Lord, in whom he trusts, and who is his support. You know, when you have a real personal encounter with Lord Jesus, your faith remains strong. Even in times of troubles, in times of trouble. And this is where the renewer in your call to be. First, to give everyone a personal encounter. And this is what the renewer has been doing. You notice, because of the renewer, and we know, we have been discussing many times with Nebel Sakra, Sri Director, the charismatic renewer can no longer be confined to prayer groups. That was the traditional charismatic prayer groups. Let me tell you, this is going. This is going to be history soon. Because the charismatic renewer, the prayer groups, they are useful to some extent. As initially it started well, to offer services. People come and pray, and they get healed, they go back home. These kind of things will give people an initial experience. Good, to some extent, to get people to have a first encounter with the Lord Jesus in the Spirit. The Life in the Spirit seminar that these groups hold. That is only the first stage. I believe this is the first stage where the charismatic prayer group would be offering. But the charismatic prayer group, if it's just offering services, will not last and cannot grow. Because what will the group can grow only when the group becomes really an ecclesial community. And this is where I find it important. That is why you notice the renewers started with prayer group, but after that, they established a lot of covenant communities. In fact, the real renewal of the church was not so much in the prayer group. The prayer group was a starting point. But those who were involved in the renewal, eventually, they joined covenant communities. And this is what I'm seeing today. What I'm seeing today is for young people. Because when we are talking about faith, it's not just, you know, some people mistaken, eh? That when we go to the charismatic, wow, praise the Lord, we feel very high. Wow. It's a sentimental thing. You say, Father, this is all emotional. It is not. It is more than just worshipping and feeling good. If it's a feeling good experience, this is what the charismatic is all about. The renewer wants to transform life, wants to change life. And this is where you notice that those groups and the young groups, whether it's Amplified, it goes to St. Francis Saviour. They have so many groups, Master Community and so on, St. Mary the Angels. All those groups, the youth groups today, are no longer really, in that, not like in those days, those days youth group means social. Everything is social. Beginning one opening prayer, one closing prayer, the rest all social. And nobody wants to come. That's why the youth groups are not working. Why are they not growing? Because it's a waste of time. Because it is not it is not engineered, it is not powered by the Spirit, by the Gospel. But today, you communities, although they don't call themselves charismatic, but I tell you the word today, charismatic is, the charismatic is the whole church, where there is a new, can every, all the groups who are open to the Spirit, they are all charismatic. Without the term, you don't have to use the term charismatic to be a charismatic. But the elements of charismatic spirituality, the elements of Catholic life, it's all there. And so all these groups are flourishing. Because why? In today's second reading, we are told a Christian community comes together for fellowship. Because it is in fellowship that we grow. And this is where you notice that for the charismatic renewal, what is interesting is that you have something that is so important. Sometimes it's so difficult to bring the group together. A lot of division. You notice that one of the signs a person has been renewed in the spirit is this spirit of unity, fellowship, wanting to be recognizing everyone as his brother, as his sister, recognizing the need to pray together, to worship together. And that is why, after all, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of unity. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit brings unity. That's why I have always said before, you know, People in the renewer, and those of you in prayer groups, if there is a lot of division, a lot of competition, 
you are not. You can pray hallelujah many times, but you don't have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I cannot believe it. And I sh it cannot even exist. Because if you have the Holy Spirit, leaders will be humble, leaders will be cooperative, and we will work together as a team. And we will listen to each other. That is the true sign of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit, wherever the Spirit is, there is the church. There is love. And so, this is where I see the renewal is contributing. And then, yes, St. Paul tells us this. You know, in the second reading, he speaks about the love that brings us together. And then he also said, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. In all wisdom, you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts. This is where... I see the renewal is having an impact in our people's life. Because there can be no gathering of Christians without the sharing of the word. Without the sharing of the word. So it's more than praise and worship. It is the word of God that will change us. The sharing of the word, how the Lord has touched me in my life. That is why I say, it is those covenant communities, those little communities, that these are the people where Christ becomes so real. And this is my direction. Even in CSC, for us it's clear. If you are not a praying community, don't talk about service. That those who are serving must belong to a kind of cell group. You must belong to a certain basic community where you share where you pray together. That is what St. Paul tells us, that the word of Christ dwell in you. And precisely, it should not be so difficult, because why? Because those of us who have encountered the Holy Spirit, the one of the signs that you have the Holy Spirit, is not just so much speaking in tongues, is that when the word of God becomes alive, that when you read the word of God, the word of God is as if Jesus is speaking to you. A love for the Word of God is a manifestation that you have received the Holy Spirit. That's why those of us who have not been renewed in the Spirit, reading the Bible is a boring thing. But the moment you have been touched by the Lord, you notice people cannot stop reading. And they want to pray. They want to pray. And they love to read the Word of God. And they need to sing, sing psalms, sing hymns, Spiritual song. That's why all these crazy medics are like that. Huh? That's why they think you're a bit crazy. Huh? Because you like to sing something. That is true. A person who is happy, a person who is in love, sings. That we have the most beautiful book in the Bible. The Songs of Songs. You know, when you are in love, you always sing to your loved one. Huh? That, is, that is normal for a person who is in love. So you know, my dear brothers and sisters, there are many things the renewer is making gateway. Find a thing. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. This is one more thing that the renewer has done. The renewer has brought the Lordship of Christ into the world. That we can say Jesus is Lord. Truly, not because we have learned from somewhere, because we know Jesus is really Lord. A person who is filled with spirit, he wants to surrender everything to the Lord. And let the Lordship of Christ be seen in our own lives and establishing his Lordship. After all, what is the central message of Jesus? The proclamation of the kingdom of God. The history is speaking as supposed, you know, we were intending to serve the feast of Christ the King, but then it's before sunset. <laughs> just rules, just rules. <laughs> so, uh, today is the last day this is last day, we first made Feast of Christ the King. Where's the Feast of Christ the King? The last day of the liturgical year, so that Christ's kingdom, He is Lord over all creation. That means to say, the message that Jesus has started has been completed. God reigns. And that is the heart of a true charismatic. To get everyone, and that is why in a new evangelization, after you encounter the Lord Jesus, you're supposed to Make sure that this spirit of the gospel, the gospel values, are somehow indirectly 
or directly permeated in every sector of our life, whether it's culture, whether it's economics, whether it's politics, whether it's social life, whether it's in terms of globalization, migration, the mass media, and so on. So that the gospel is truly how people live. Because the gospel brings happiness and truth and love. And so let me conclude by saying this. After saying all these things, what is the pros and cons? I think the renewal, in some sense, okay, um, those of us with the charismatic renewal, in some sense, it has brought about a personal encounter with the Lord. Now, if you are in a so-called traditional charismatic bridegroom, then your work is of servicing, helping people to get in touch with the Spirit, leading them to Christ Jesus. Those of us who have moved on from the charismatic renewal to church groups, church ministries, or communities that you have formed. These groups will be the period of deepening formation. A deepening formation is necessary. Because remember, in Porta Fide, Pope Benedict says, the first is encounter, second, formation, CCC, Vatican documents. We need to reappropriate the faith. We need to rediscover the faith, the treasures of the church. Because we need to be grounded. And then we can talk. Thirdly, then we can talk about evangelization. Perhaps one of the weaknesses that sometimes people accuse or charge against the charismatic is that we are not social minded enough. We are just praising the Lord. Well, it is not quite true. Because not everybody is called for a given service in the church. This is the part the renewal place in the church. To give everyone an encounter with the Lord Jesus. From that, you have to discern your vocation. To move on, whether to involve in whichever movement as the Lord calls you. Bringing the spirit of the gospel. And all the same, what I think it is important for us today is that we must be conscious of where we stand and how we are going to work. And for the renewal especially, I think it calls for constant re-examination, reading the signs of the time, being courageous to see how the renewal could work more effectively. I think we should not allow ideology, old mindset, old things to prevent us from moving out. And I say this is critical because if we don't sing with the time, if we don't respond to the needs of our people, eventually we will be displaced. And so I praise and thank the Lord for the renewal and I know the Spirit will continue to work in and through us. And I think this is beautiful because this is what we originally say. We want to put the charismatic out of business. <laughs> so yeah, the whole church is charismatic as it was in the first 300 years. The whole church was charismatic. There is no such thing a charismatic church. To be a Christian is to be charismatic. When we no longer make a distinction between charismatic and non-charismatic, I think they have done a good job. Huh? They have done a good job when they put themselves out of business. Then fathers, Tom Curran can retire as <laughs> <laughs>